Hi everyone, and welcome to the fourth uh, Zcash Foundation Audiovisual Club monthly meetup. I'm really excited about this. We've been, it's been three months since we announced the club, and we've been moving really fast with having weekly meetings and weekly workshops now on Tuesday. These monthly meetups are getting a lot more interesting and uh, to me and the fact that we get deeper into the technology of producing the content that we are then as a community uh, using to market Zcash to share the, the message of Zcash and to share the importance of privacy and, and the talk, speaking to regulators, speaking to investors, speaking to developers and trying to uh, get this message out in a, in a real clear and cohesive and organized way uh, for the better sake of Zcash. So we have such a big lineup today that I don't want to waste any time talking about uh, what we're up to in the club because uh, that's, that's going on in Discord. You can join us. You can see and read along with all of our troubleshooting. You can join us on Tuesday for the workshops. You can come in on Wednesday for a general club meeting. All of this happens in Discord at 1700 UTC in every, it's Tuesday and Wednesday and our meetups are on Thursday, the last Thursday of the month. So let's just start uh, straight where we left off last month, which Paul had just given us an intro to uh, his setup and his recording of his podcast and what he does for editing. And I was wondering, Paul froze for me. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. But Joel, I was wondering if you could give us a rundown of what you do for your podcasts with Zcash Podcast and the Digital Cash Network. You're muted. Sorry. There you go. Uh, you mean purely on a technical level? Yeah, yeah, like a, an overview of um, of how you do the recording, what what sort of software you use. You mentioned to me that you use only open source software, or are you using some combination thereof and uh, microphones of choice? Like, what's uh, what's your setup look like? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So um, for the Zcash podcast, I do a, it's live as well as recorded. And so what I do is first off, I use OBS because, um, you know, I use Linux. I've been Linux user since 2017 or so. Um, and I'm just transitioning um, out of, I guess, the the more evil kind of providers on phone right now is finally, I'm finally doing like the phone type thing, which is okay. an extra challenge of the which... graphene and all that stuff. Which Linux distro are you using on uh, for for OBS? Is it Ubuntu? I'm using Ubuntu. Okay. Yes. Cool. And so I use OBS, and um, there have been a few challenges along the way, but I've found a setup that actually kind of you know works. Um, so I use OBS, and then I stream directly to YouTube from there, and then I have a a, a restream plugin that allows you to stream to a second location which I can't remember exact. I, I could not walk anyone through how to do that as well because I just remember having to like compile different plugins from like scratch and throw little files in here, which I'm, it's way over my head. And that just by pure accident, I made it work and it's a, it's a nightmare. But so I do that to Odyssey, which is the library blockchain based uh, YouTube alternative, I guess. And so that's that basic setup. Um, so the what plugin I used that you to... talk about is an OBS yeah. plugin. Oh, sorry, you, you're talking. I, I see a mute. Oh, that's... Hey, oh that was my. I'm making all cool that. kids do it. <laughs> yeah. So this plugin that you're talking about is to restream. That's an OBS plugin, right? Yes. Okay. And it's um, it's developed for I think Windows and Mac. There's no Linux plugin, uh, but you can just kind of figure it out from the. The code. Anyone who's actually has technical knowledge could probably get this to work in like 20 minutes, but not me. I just had to literally drag and drop random files into random folders until something worked, that and it too. did. Yeah, yeah. And so I do that and record. And um, my video source for guests, etc., is Jitsi. I've been kind of using Jitsi before it was cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, been and for when a long back time. when it was, yeah, I think. I've been mostly using Jitsi for the last three, four years or so, almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. um, it's had its buggy moments, but these days it's actually pretty reliable, especially now that you have things like Brave actually using Jitsi. Ah. 
And um, I know so, they had a Firefox yeah. problem for a while there, so it's good to hear yeah. that Brave works now. Well, have you seen um, Brave's video um, kind of product? It's literally just like a licensed Jitsi kind of thing. It literally is Jitsi. They use Jitsi for Brave, but then they ch try to charge you if you have too many participants or something. And gotcha. I, I mean, I don't, whatever. I just use yeah. Jitsi. So okay. yeah, cool. I use Jitsi. Um, I have my, the, my old steady webcam I've been using for ever is this one you see right now, which is the um, Logitech, what is it, C920? Uh, just a basic 1080p webcam it works pretty well um actually i have um uh, two webcams it's probably gonna drive people nuts my, my stupid setup here but um i just got a, a logitech brio like a much much newer more advanced kind of one for sort of recording the non-live type things like when i'm doing like uh like ex break like breakdown videos for the channel things like that and, and also for the actual shows and things um, the thing is, because of the quirk, I think this is probably the way, <laughs> because of the way Linux works, but when I'm doing like a live show and I'm in a Jitsi Hangout, uh, if I have my webcam on there, I can't then use it in OBS at the same time. And so for a while, what I had to do is just uh, screen share the Jitsi Hangout into my OBS thing so they could see exactly what I was seeing and all that kind of thing. I can't remember exactly why I went away from that. Maybe um, I do remember at one point um, the new Linux, the new Ubuntu version. I think it was when they, they did the jammy jellyfish thing. It screwed everything up for me. I hated that for a while. Like everything stopped working. Um, it's probably around that time I stopped doing the screen share. So now this webcam is just what people see when I'm live streaming. And then the other one is the one that actually records me for like the screening purposes. So the guest sees me on one webcam, the other one on the other one. And maybe at some point I'm going to do like a, a multi-cam and put one on like a selfie stick and go around me like this as I'm recording, but probably not. Um, so this is a great web, the great um, microphone. It's an Audio-Technica 2005, I believe. And it's probably the, uh, a guy who's, done um radio for like 30 years or whatever recommended it uh it's basically as far as i'm aware the absolute best usb mic you can get for the lowest cost kind of combo it's just like 70 80 dollars or something no one complains about the sound quality i don't know if i could get i don't know if i could like get better sound quality really and so this is really great. Um, I had this one for like eight years or something and then, or however long it's been. And then it broke. So I got another one and this is, this is like two or so years old now, two, three years old. But yeah, so that, that's what I would definitely, um, recommend. Um, let's see my lighting setup. Oh, let me see if I can just go through. I have like a big old soft box right here. I need another one, but then I got this like USB ring light here and I probably am just going to get another softbox like that and put it over instead. Um, now, there's curtains open. There's natural light right now, but I do have a little... Um, uh, I'm not too lazy to go up and get it, but it's like a little, little square light like this that's pointed up at the wall that kind of... You see that, like, that light on the wall behind me? Yeah, it looks like you've got um, sort of a halo. I ca yeah, that halo. Glow coming anyway, out. that... Uh, that um when i have to close the curtains or it's nighttime i i beam the light on it does that little bit of a halo effect and it kind of works out but yeah i'm in the process i'm going to add a i'm going to put another soft box on that side instead and at some point i'm going to actually get my my background figured out and not be uh, not be just so plain like this i'm thinking doing some like mid journey prints that might be a thing because everyone has like their own like you know everyone has a background half of them suck but they're still better than mine and so i think that um i'm probably just going to be like come up with some crazy mid journey prompt to do some like ai art then have like a few like maybe the first thing that sticks in my mind is do three different like vertical scrolls 
mm-hmm. representing like a crypto journey. And of course, like work Zcash in there somewhere into one of these designs. And it'll just be sitting out in the background and be like, oh, custom artwork. Well, kind of. I just paid eight bucks one month and just type some stuff out. But yeah. Yeah, I love so, that. And you don't have to upscale too much or you don't have to worry about the resolution getting too weird if you're it's in the background of a video anyway. Then yeah. you can uh, you can sacrifice a little detail. But with some of this upscaling tech now, you could even print. I'm picturing like these old photo studio wheels that they would have that change the scene and covers the whole background. You could do that with a few mm-hmm. different scenes. Yeah. And then I forget. I don't even know what brand these headphones are, but they're some wireless headphone. Let me see. Um, sound core. Some kind of um, thing I get off of Amazon. Just like a basic noise canceling. Um, I always get terrified when my wife gets in the gets in the room because i can't hear anything all of a sudden there's like oh no so they they cancel the noise pretty well they work pretty well they have a like a separate sometimes i leave them on accidentally overnight and there's still like a charge in the morning so they got they got some good um they got some good longevity on that and uh is that it is there any more um, that was really good. Components I'm kind of missing. No, I think you covered it from uh, from all of the technical, the hardware side and the software side. I, I like that you touched on lighting and the fact that, that that is, to me, even more important than having a fancy backdrop uh, or going with a, with a key light or with a key and the green screen. And if you have really good lighting, then it that, like my lighting right now is horrible. I could probably try to fix it, but this is something I'm interested in learning from the podcasters from the people who are putting this content out and uh and i i like the the background light that you have it's subtle but it really is a huge improvement um so good job on that and thanks for for mentioning thanks. that as well um basically if you just get a good three point lighting kind of thing with like diffused lighting and that's that does so much um, at my old place i used to have i just had the one soft box i didn't have the other light and then I had like some old lamp, but the lamp was always gross and harsh on me. So I took some like parchment paper, you know, paper used to like cook, make, make cookies on and stuff and put it around like the light and it diffused the light and it looked a lot better. So there's a few little tricks That's you it. can do, but I would say a good microphone like this one first. Yeah. And then everything else doesn't matter as much, but then the next thing would be lighting. And then after that, okay, maybe a better webcam and then mm-hmm. you're good. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. In every instance, I think audio is more important than video. And like we were saying before this meetup started, that the audio could be taken from these recordings and published at at audio um, platforms, things like Spotify. You can't really do that. I do that too. Like you can, but it's much easier if you have the source. Mm -hmm. You were saying which other platforms do you publish on? Yeah, so I do like the full video podcasts are on YouTube and Odyssey. And then the, I I cut an audio only version where for the live show, the pre-show chatter, I just sort of cut that out because they have people on the audio only hate it. They complain so much. Um, I guess I'm not a Joe Rogan yet, but, and so then I put that out on like this, what used to be anchor, but then anchor got acquired by Spotify. So it goes out on, you know, Spotify, Apple music, all the usual audio kind of things, the whole RSS feed thing. And then for, um, I do put clips out. Um, those got on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and TikTok right now. Hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's kind of everything, I guess. Um, I do, for a lot of the TikTok type stuff, um, sometimes I, rec- I record just like short clips of just me and stuff. Um, I used to do them on the phone because it's just like, hey, you know, this is how you're supposed to. But then I got lazy. And so now what I do is I just record with the webcam. But then I, you know, in the actual video editor, I just like make it look like a TikTok, like zoom in, do that same aspect ratio and kind of do it that way. Which, by the way, I use uh, Kaden Live for all my video stuff, which is um, just the, the open source one that's available for Linux, you know. Uh, and uh, of course I use GIMP as my, uh, thumbnail editor or whatever. And yeah, that's, that's kind of my, I think that's, I think that's everything. I can't, 
Can't see if there's anything else. Is Caden live? Is that how do you spell that? Is it with a C or a K? K D E N live. K-D-E-N. All okay. one word. Gotcha. I used to use Open Shot, I think, when uh, when I was using Linux, mm-hmm. and that it worked a little bit. But uh, I just started using CapCut on my Windows machine. I don't know if it's open source or not. Um, I definitely I I would like to go all open source. I've tried to do that in the past. And uh, the software wasn't up to par. That the drivers became problems with with using OBS and things, and doing video compression. Mm. I think it's come a long way since then. This was five six years ago, and now it's yeah. the convenience. I stick with Windows, but I'm going to have to put yeah. some Ubuntu stuff on here so that I can help troubleshoot some of these issues for for folks. I mean, I think you'd be surprised at how far we are today with everything. Like I've been, I've been. Tr- I remember back in the day, I used to think that. Linux was just some, you know, you had to be Mr. Hacker Man to do it. Like, but like, I can't even, I mean, every, I, I run into basically no problems on like 99% of my stuff with Ubuntu. And then with just using open source versions of everything, like open office and things like that, or LibreOffice or whatever. And then, um, even I'm, as I'm starting to go through like the de Googled phone kind of thing, um, some things, very specific things, are very challenging, but every mostly everything is super normal and like easy. Mm-hmm. You know, you just get your little, you know, graphene VPN, all the other stuff, and then it just works. And there's just a couple of things that are really annoying that I'm still figuring out. But yeah, that's great. Um, I, yeah, I love the open source approach and I definitely want to offer that more. It has a lot of benefits besides the, the whole freedom and privacy stuff. It also has the fact that most of it, uh, Ubuntu is getting a little bloated now, but most of the open source stuff runs with a lot less resources than their, uh, their expensive proprietary solutions. Paul, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Joel. I'm sure we're all fam- fam- uh, familiar with Naomi Brockwell. And she spent her whole recent life trying to tell us that our phone is spying on us, our browser is spying on us, everything's spying on us. So use something that's not spying on you. Yeah, it's true. And we usually pay to be spied on. We pay for these products that are spying on mm-hmm. us. I find that fascinating as well. Um, yeah. And then we can repurpose them for the purpose of, of, market, of marketing and uh, activism and, uh, and, and the zeal and all the things we're producing. Um, Paul, you're mm. popping in and out of, of this video. Are you, have you been, are you here? Can you hear us? Then he's gone again. Might be having some technical difficulties. And I still can't see that chat. What's going on in the chat? Anything interesting? Chaos. Yeah, usually. Um, all right. I'm really interesting, uh, interested in how this uh, auto-translation thing is working for everyone. It looks like it's pretty cool from my side. There's probably Hey Ryan. Hi, you're back. I I, I think that my internet connection must not be stable or some, mm. some got some other issue. I'm at consensus and oh. it seems to be like locking up just every couple of minutes. I'm afraid if I start to present it's gonna lock up on me and I won't even know it. <laughs> it's everyone trying to sync their dang blockchains. Everyone eating uh, out uh, of bandwidth. Me- Maybe it's really disappointing because I really would like to try to go through everything today, but I'm, yeah, you know, I can try, but, um, I, I, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll just turn off my video and just share my screen. Maybe that'll work better. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm also curious how your, uh, how is consensus going, um, from your, from your perspective? It just started today, right? Yesterday. Yesterday. And, um, it's, it's been good. Uh, in... and he's gone. <laughs> There's another block. <laughs> okay, Paul, we're gonna have to catch up with you next time. Uh, we've got a lot to cover here, and um, I want to maybe give John and Vito a chance to switch their source language on those translations, and then um, once they're good to go and we have some kind of signal, then uh, Yodata, you can take over. Are you here, Yodata? Yeah, just say when, man. You can do it now, John. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hola, Yorata. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in this meeting. I will speak in Spanish. Hola a todos. 
Para mí es un placer poder estar en este encuentro con toda la comunidad de Zcash Global en inglés, portugués y español. Pero más placentero aún es poder presentar a Aura y Roosevelt, dos de nuestros miembros más activos y comprometidos con la comunidad global de Zcash. Aura y Roosevelt, desde el principio, han estado muy comprometidos con Zcash y eso se ha reflejado en distintas propuestas y proyectos. El primero de ellos es contar con el primer sitio web de Zcash en español, una iniciativa creada, administrada y desarrollada por estos dos miembros de nuestra comunidad. Además de esto, también han publicado un fantástico contenido en el blog del sitio web de Zcash en español, con el fin de lograr un mayor alcance con Zcash a lo largo de Latinoamérica y la comunidad hispana que se encuentra repartida a lo largo del mundo. Esto ha ayudado en el crecimiento y adopción de Zcash entre los hispanos, quienes hacen vida en nuestros espacios digitales. Aure y Roosevelt participan como moderadores u moderadores en distintas actividades y eventos que hacemos cada mes en nuestras comunidades de Telegram, Discord y Twitter. Esto nos ha permitido conectar con distintas personas que se han interesado por Zcash y recientemente tuvieron la oportunidad de presentar una propuesta de subvención ante el Zcash Minor Grants de la Fundación Zcash, la cual fue aprobada por la comunidad global de Zcash. Esto nos llena de mucha felicidad en la comunidad hispana, porque ahora podremos contar con el primer podcast de Zcash en nuestro idioma titulado Zcast, un podcast de Zcash en español. Esto es de suma importancia, porque el formato del podcast más que una moda es una tendencia creciente en uso y adopción, no solo por parte de distintos podcasters que se encuentran repartidos a lo largo del mundo, especialmente en los países de habla hispana, sino que es un formato de información, difusión, encuentro y conexión muy amable para dar a conocer todo lo que ofrece la tecnología de privacidad financiera con Zcash. Creo que con este podcast muchas más personas de nuestro continente conocerán todos los beneficios que ofrece Zcash y se unirán a la creciente comunidad global. Ello les permitirá insertarse y colaborar de forma más consciente en el ecosistema, colaborando en distintos proyectos los cuales se verán beneficiados por los aportes de los nuevos miembros. Como este espacio es para que Aura y Roosevelt puedan hablarnos de todo lo que van a desarrollar con su propuesta de subvención, llamada Zcast, un podcast de Zcash en español, les doy la palabra. Bienvenidos. Muchas gracias por la oportunidad, Ryan. Hola, hola. Buenas, Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? Saludos. Se escucha, ¿verdad? Sí. Bueno, adelante primero las damas. Qué bueno tenerlos a todos reunidos aquí. Estamos bien emocionados de poder compartir con la comunidad de Zcash Global y bueno, sobre todo poder explicarles un poco cuáles fueron las cosas que nos incentivaron a presentar eh, la postulación a la subvención, qué es lo que tenemos pensado hacer y que de alguna manera la comunidad conozca de primera mano qué es el proyecto en sí mismo y cuál va a ser el alcance que nosotros esperamos tener y por supuesto, como siempre decimos, contar con el apoyo de toda la comunidad. Sí, es emocionante para mí, de verdad, buenas tardes, eh, saludos a todos. Es emocionante para mí estar hablando con gente que maneja el open source, yo soy fanático de Linux, los que me conocen, así que genial que estemos hablando el mismo idioma. Y bueno, tenemos ya bastante tiempo haciendo podcast, eh, sin duda que nosotros vimos la oportunidad de difundir aquí en Latinoamérica más la palabra, la tecnología de Zcash y creo que eh, fue acertada esa decisión de, de Zcast así que, bueno, sin duda alguna eh, nuestra proyección es alcanzar Argentina, Chile, México, Colombia, otros países, Perú que todavía no se han activado a conocer la tecnología de Zcash pensamos que con el podcast pues va a ser mucho más poderoso el mensaje así que de verdad que encantadísimos, súper emocionados y súper encantados, además de estar en esta primera actividad, en este primer Meetup, compartiendo con ustedes de, de forma multilinguaje. Muy emocionante. ¿Se escucha? ¿Sí se escucha? Ah, ah, te escuchamos, te escuchamos. ¿Qué les pasó? 
No, no, bueno, eso, pues estábamos comentando eso, estamos súper, súper emocionados. Eh, fue un gusto ver... Eh, 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 ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cómo se llama el, el chico que estuvo hablando antes de nosotros? Eh, que estuvo hablando mu muchas veces, las personas piensan que el tema del podcast tienes que tener el super, eh, el super equipo, como, como dijo él, el, el, el audífono más caro, el micrófono más sofisticado. Y la verdad es que una de las ventajas, como decías tú, Yoditer, una de las ventajas del formato podcast es precisamente eso, que puedes hacerlo de una forma simple, no gastando mucho. Eh, y bueno, sin duda alguna, hay muchos setups. Eh, nosotros pensamos eh, que en Cicast podemos tener varios formatos. Puede ser el formato podcast web, en donde nos comunicamos a través de Jitsi, amamos Jitsi, eh, o a través de Stringer, que es una herramienta de, de, de pago. O Zencaster eh, también. O Zencaster. Es decir, hay muchas vías para hacer el podcast vía web. Si quisiéramos hacerlo así como ustedes, pudiéramos utilizar una de esas herramientas con personas que estén pues, fuera de Venezuela o en otro país. Eh, el, el formato inicial que tenemos pensado para Cicast es grabado nosotros en nuestra casa, en el setup, y luego editado, también por supuesto con Linux, Caden Live, una de las herramientas que usamos, eh, y luego subido a YouTube, ¿no? Eh, es, ese, es ese formato de podcast o de video podcast eh, grabado y editado. Pero también incluso nos gustaría muchísimo tener la oportunidad de, si se activan más eventos acá en Venezuela, pues probablemente quizás ir y cubrirlo. Sería genial estar en un, por ejemplo, Caracas Blockchain Week, o en otro evento, otra actividad en la cual podamos cubrir en vivo y estar transmitiendo, ¿no? Entonces, nosotros pensamos distintas formas de que el podcast pueda llegar primero pensado en YouTube, lo pensamos primero en YouTube eh, por el tema de video eh, y también pues con Spotify, sin duda alguna, es la plataforma que hoy día está, digamos, apoderada de, de todo lo que tiene que ver con el tema del, del podcast, del alcance. Entonces, eh, por vía Spotify y vía YouTube, pensamos eh, que es la vía más uh, sencilla sencilla y, y, y creo que masiva también y potente por el tema de la masividad no entonces por allí por allí es que es que va eh, nuestra perspectiva para compartir Cicast sí otra de las cosas que también tenemos tomadas en cuenta es que queremos hacer un podcast que sea bastante sencillo de entender hablar de Cicast de una manera bien fácil para que la gente se sienta más interesada en la comunidad, en el ecosistema y en las propuestas que tenemos de manera eh, fácil. Que cualquier persona que nos escuche pueda entender fácilmente qué es Cicash, qué es lo que estamos proponiendo, qué hay dentro del ecosistema que pueda ser aprovechado y cómo pueden aprovechar la comunidad también ellos mismos. Entonces, un poco de lo que hemos estado estructurando para cuando salgan los primeros episodios de Cicast es precisamente eso, que sea sumamente sencillo y que la gente lo pueda consumir fácilmente. Más allá de la, de la parte técnica, que es la portabilidad, el discurso y el mensaje que queremos llevar es un mensaje sencillo. Entonces, eso es otra de las eh, grandes cosas que tiene, digamos, el podcast eh, para, para la comunidad en sí misma, pero también para la gente que no conoce nada de Zcash, que este sea un medio donde quizás puedan tener algún otro tipo de información más sencilla, quizás no la técnica que conseguimos más fácilmente, sino la experiencial, que en el podcast también hayan personas que vengan y nos acompañen y hablen del ecosistema tal cual es, de manera fácil, cuál ha sido su experiencia, cómo están adoptando Zcash en su vida cotidiana, porque es precisamente lo que nos trajo a nosotros a esta comunidad es lo que nosotros hemos vivido y es lo que estamos invitando a la gente a experimentar. Entonces, esa también es una de las cosas que queremos mostrar dentro de SICAS. Sí, hacerlo bastante experiencial, testimonial, eh, porque hay, hay mucha información técnica de SICAS, es la verdad. Eh, y, y, y para eso estamos estudiando, leyendo, informándonos todos los días. Eso es necesario, es importante saberlo, pero nosotros pensamos, y me gustaría leer sus opiniones por el chat o que dejen sus comentarios, que si queremos lograr esa, esa famosa uh, adopción masiva que es tan necesaria, pues tenemos que hacerlo llegar con un lenguaje llano, accesible. Que el emprendedor, que el maestro, que el profesor, que el chofer pueda empezar a beneficiarse de utilizar una billetera de Zcash, enviar dinero fuera del país, cobrar por sus productos o servicios de una forma eh, muy sencilla, que no se tenga que complicar, que es direcciones Z, direcciones T, direcciones U, muy, que se le haga normal. muy accesible. Es lo, que es, es lo que queremos, la verdad es que es lo que queremos eh, y por supuesto si en algún momento hay que hablar de algo técnico pues lo tocaremos y lo hablaremos, pero 
nosotros apuntamos a que sea accesible para todo el mundo. Eh, no sé, como por allí compartieron imágenes de los audífonos, ¿será que les, les hacemos el spoiler y les compartimos un poquito de los juguetes? Ya nosotros recibimos la subvención, hemos estado esta semana muy ocupados con, con todo esto. Eh, y fíjense qué interesante, ¿no? Un tema de podcasting. Nosotros estuvimos investigando, bueno, ¿cuál, es la, cuál va a ser la mejor cámara o cuál va a ser el equipo más potente? Y la verdad es que muchos especialistas y profesionales del área audiovisual nos dijeron, si quieres hacer un podcast con un buen teléfono, un iPhone 12, 13 o 14, puedes hacer un buen video de alta resolución. Con un buen Samsung de última generación, puedes hacer un buen video. Probablemente no requieras comprarte la cámara Nikon, la cámara Canon, Reflex. Este, entonces, eh, eso nos hizo armar mucho mejor el setup. Por aquí voy a mostrarles un pedacito de uno de los, de los juguetes que seguramente ustedes han visto por allí. A ver si se logra apreciar. Sí se ve, ¿verdad? Sí. Esto es uno de los micrófonos inalámbricos que tenemos por aquí. Entonces vamos a tener una combinación de podcast con micrófono inalámbrico. Y con micrófono de mesa. Y con micrófono de pedestal. Vamos a jugar también. De hecho, es uno de los recomendados. Un micrófono, digamos, de una gama económica, pero potente. El Blue Yeti de la gente de Logitech. De hecho, cuando hablaban anteriormente en la intervención pasada, que se graban también con la cámara, nosotros utilizamos cámaras de productos Logitech y nos ha funcionado muy bien para podcasts anteriores, por eso decidimos confiar otra vez en un micrófono que tuviera esas características, que es un micrófono eh, bastante estable, condensador, y que nos va a servir para girar también mucho el ruido y hacer la edición un poco más fácil, porque también una de las cosas que queremos tomar en cuenta es que el podcast sea lo más natural posible, que no se vea como algo tan, tan, tan técnico, tan elaborado, sino también llevar el mensaje de que al final tú puedes compartir información de manera sencilla con las cosas que tienes a mano. Ciertamente en, este, en esta ocasión estamos adquiriendo algunos equipos, pero sin embargo son equipos de fácil manipulación con condiciones técnicas estables que nos permitan también movilidad, porque es lo que, queremos, lo que queríamos hacer eh, de alguna manera, no solamente grabar en el setup que tenemos en casa, sino también poder hacer otras grabaciones y tener otros invitados fuera de acá. Entonces para nosotros era importante eh, tener portabilidad en los equipos y eso fue lo que buscamos y por eso investigamos muchísimo y nos asesoramos con gente que sabía más que nosotros, porque eso hay que hacer. Y bueno, este es el resultado, así que estamos bien contentos de, de cómo se están armando todas las cosas. Por ahí están diciendo en el chat que Google Translate is, fa is failing <ríe> so much pressure. O es que hablamos muy rápido, voy a tratar de hablar un poquito más lento. Por ahí quieren decir que, que mostremos los juguetes. Bueno, esos son algunos de los micrófonos. Optamos cámara, por, op por la cámara. Optamos por un, un teléfono Samsung S22 Ultra Plus. Ok, ahí se logra ver, ahí se logra ver, eh, dispositivos de, de, en, el, en el caso de dispos, del, del teléfono pues con, con una cámara de alta resolución, esta cámara en la cual estamos es una Logitech de 720 megapíxeles, eh, tenemos otra cámara, y eh, bueno por supuesto a los de luz que no los tenemos por aquí, tenemos por aquí otra, otra webcam que también vamos a utilizar, esta es de la Esta marca. Es una Red, Red Dragon. Arriba. Ajá. Una Red Dragon de 1080. Uh -huh. Graba bastante bien. Audio y audio video. Muy buena resolución. Es muy buena resolución. Y también está, bueno, dentro de lo que es el setup de Cicast. Así es. ¿Qué otras preguntas tienen? ¿Alguna S22, pregunta? S22 eh, Ultra. Sí, uh -huh. Sheila, ese esa es el teléfono. Y la cámara de 720 es Logitech y la de 1080 es Red Dragon. ¿Alguna otra pregunta que tengan por allí? Si tienen preguntas, sí. intervenciones, cuéntenos por aquí. Eh, Google está ahí. <risa> cámara Logitech y 1080 Red Dragon. Ajá, tal cual. ¿Any other question, Ryan? Hay trípodes, eh, dice Rockmar, sí, tenemos un trípode para el teléfono, para estabilizar el teléfono, mm -hmm. 
-huh. Y tenemos los trípodes de los aros de luz. Vamos a tener dos luces en el setup y eso es lo que tenemos ahorita. Bueno, también hay un trípode por aquí, más que un trípode es un paral de mesa. Un, un paral sencillo, un, un paral de mesa sencillo. Súper sí, fácil. Sí. Esto como para grabar un poco también cortos para publicar en otros espacios que no necesiten todo el episodio completo. Sí. ¿Qué dice por aquí? El trípode de mesa, exactamente. Edison, Edison lo vio ya. Con ese vamos a grabar a Edison. Sí, 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 sí. A ver, ¿tienen alguna otra pregunta? ¿Qué otra cosa les gustaría saber acerca de SICAST? Bueno, preguntan, ¿los temas? ¿Habrá entrevistados? ¿Habrá temporada? Sí, y qué buena pregunta, Sheila. Inicialmente, con, esta, con, con la subvención, el, lo, lo, lo solicitado y acordado fue tener una primera temporada, ¿ok? Una primer, primera temporada de seis meses eh, a un ritmo, a una frecuencia de dos episodios por mes. Es decir, que en la primera temporada vamos a tener mínimo Mínimo 12, 12 episodios, episodios. ¿ok? Um, invitados, sí, queremos tener invitados, queremos invitar a Zuko y queremos invitar a ustedes al Club Audiovisual, queremos tenerlos a todos, eh, sin duda es bien interesante, este intercambio cultural es muy poderoso, eh, si Cash Brasil está on fire, están muy activos, queremos conocerlos, eh, y bueno, sin duda alguna queremos tener invitados. Y la idea es hablar un poquito también de noticias, de cosas nuevas, hablar un poco también del sitio web de Sikash en español. Eh, sin duda alguna, esta, esta multiculturalidad enriquece y lo que queremos es, es difundir pues, mucho más Sikash. Eh, nos preguntan, ¿invitados virtuales? Sí, claro. Esa es otra de las cosas sí. que tenemos pensadas porque muchos de nosotros estamos regados por el mundo. Y la verdad es que queremos no solamente contar con gente de la comunidad, sino con gente que ya haya hecho adopción de Zcash y nos cuenten su experiencia. Recuerden que esto va a ser como un híbrido entre la parte técnica y la parte vivencial de lo que es estar en el ecosistema, adoptar a Zcash como eh, una moneda de uso cotidiano y todo lo demás. Entonces, importante eso. En Zcash también puede haber bochinche. Los que estuvieron en estos días en el Free to See Life saben a qué nos referimos, el bochinche. Es probable que, a, que, a, que suceda, es inevitable que en Venezuela seamos bochincheros, pero, pero sin duda alguna siempre, primero que nada, si cash y luego un poquito de bochinche. ¿Qué plataformas han analizado para esos encuentros virtuales? En primera instancia, Rockmar, eh, nosotros vamos a hacer episodios grabados. Entonces estamos pensando grabar en Zencaster, en, Giz, en Jitsi y en StreamYard. Son las tres herramientas con las que vamos a estar grabando cuando tengamos invitados. invitados. Entonces en algún futuro cercano pudiera ser que hagamos conexiones en vivo. Sería fantástico, pero no es lo que tenemos por lo menos para los primeros episodios. Pero eso puede venir. Sí, cuando no haya invitados pues seremos nosotros dos pues hablando y conversando. Eh, sin duda alguna gra grabado. Total. Por ahí, Google, tra Google Translate con bochinches, está complicado. Party, uh, <risa> fun. Party, fun. <risa> bueno. Okay. Something like this. <risa> <I don't know. risa> Cuando los invitados sean presenciales, cuenten con el refrigerio. Qué bueno. Sí, <risa> qué bueno saber eso. Y un refrigerio pagado con SEC, por supuesto. Ya tenemos la merch, la search aquí. Además, qué bueno. Para nuestras bebidas. <risa> Curso de OBS a la orden. Gracias, Rockman. Seguramente te vamos a estar preguntando porque nunca está de más saber cositas técnicas que nos puedan ayudar. Sin duda. Eh, dice Tecnopapapi. Aquí también les podemos enseñar a usar OBS. Fantástico. Open source in the house, totalmente. Yeah. Oh, eh. O sea, <risa> Jodita, ¿alguna otra pregunta que quieras hacernos? Yeah, I don't know if is Ryan or anybody I'm else. Right still here. Here. Yeah, <laughs> that was really great. Uh, we covered a lot. You uh, and uh, Roosevelt and Ora, you covered a lot of different things. The Google Translate is not perfect, but I hope that it was helpful for some people. My rusty Spanish is uh, maybe about the same as Google Translate at this point. So, <laughs> so it, don't uh, worry. I was keeping. I was keeping up a little bit. And, uh, and I really like the information that we all covered about the technical uh, equipment that we're using, as well as 
uh, the effect that this sort of grassroots marketing, this sort of um, this this support that we're getting is is really going to help spread the Zcash message in so many ways and spread for adoption and and for merch and for uh, supporting each other to do what we love in a way we love and working with this audio video tech and um, and publishing platforms and figuring out what's the best thing in all of these cases for our own uses and for our own situations. So that was awesome. And uh, I really like that we're able to practice this, this translation stuff too. I'm looking forward to, uh, to ZCon 4. That's going to be really awesome. And uh, everything that we're doing with the AV Club now is kind of building towards that. And we get to include, uh, so hopefully we'll get to include some more team on the AV side to get more of the conference uh, atmosphere, the vibe, everything that happens off the stage, I want to capture that and involve the home audience in a, in a more direct way. So I'm really looking forward to that. We're here for you if you need anything in the AV Club. Uh, we're, we're down to help and support in any kind of uh, experimental and playful ways, especially. I like playing with all of this new technology and seeing what new ideas we can come up with. The mid-journey idea that Joel had, I spend way too much time on mid-journey every single day, and there's a ton of these other AI things happening that we can start using in, in interesting ways for to create cool art and, and like marketing stuff, but also maybe to protect identities of people in the crowd, you know? if. If you're in a if you're in a crowd and you're live streaming something, you only want maybe the person on stage to be seen, and someone walks by, you could turn them into a rabbit or something. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun and different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff that you could definitely do anymore. Um, I was yeah, uh, a really good test. We are definitely going to need more practice. Um, I'm really looking forward to the podcast coming up that y'all talked about. And also, yes, free open source software. I am for it 100%. Yeah, well, we're well, using Google Translate here, too. <laughs> you know, yeah, we hope yeah. to be using free and open source uh, and more, more accurate translation tools in the future. But we... We need to learn it all together and figure out where it is and what works. And this is a really good test for that. So appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to Zcast also. It's going to be exciting. Nosotros también. Estamos muy emocionados. <laughs> We too. <laughs> emocionados y contentísimos. De verdad que ha sido una experiencia bien, bien grata poder traer a la comunidad algo que sentimos que hacía falta, sobre todo a la comunidad hispana, que quizás no tiene tanto conocimiento. Hemos visto otras comunidades como la de Brasil, que son tan activas. Acá en, en Latinoamérica también se está empezando a hacer ese movimiento de activarnos mucho y creo que mientras más espacios hayan donde la educación sea primero, vamos a estar mejor como comunidad. Entonces, esa es una de las cosas que queremos hacer con SICAST. Sí. So amazing. Really, really good meetup with you all. Um, I had my camera off to try to save my video bandwidth uh, with the, the streaming to Discord and to free to z So there was probably some weirdness in the recording, but uh, like I said, it's a test. And the AV Club, we like doing experiments, and they don't always work. But uh, I, I really appreciate all of you joining us. Definitely, Aura. And Roosevelt, thank you. And I look forward to hearing more about Zcast and hearing those episodes when they come out. Joel, thank you for all of your behind the scenes tech and software run through. That's super helpful. And I took lots of notes and we'll be looking into some of that. I'm sure we'll be in touch and we can troubleshoot some more. Uh, I want to enable more people to do what you're doing. You're muted still. Just said absolutely. Great. Yodata, are you still there? I don't know. Uh, Yodata, if you're still there, then thank you as well for co-hosting. Yes. And uh, yeah, thank you for the for the global ambassador support you're doing in, in leading that. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for your support. Um, yeah, I'm going to reboot like the Google Translate. Part of the thing that I think that might be slowing it down on my end, 
um, is the fact that I am in the meeting in two separate accounts and I will be exiting out of one account. There is a uh, testimony in, I think, like less than 10 minutes by Marta Belcher um, uh. that will be live streamed. Uh, and so I might just translate that like over into the playground labs here or something. Yeah, very cool. Um, and actually, you mentioned the speed of what it's doing, and I think that the resor the way that Vito is doing it will use less resources because he's just mm -hmm. using his one account and then streaming from the virtual camera from OBS into Discord. So he just has that one account logged in. He's getting the audio from the free to Z broadcast. So there's probably a little delay from what we're seeing on his side compared to, to what you're hearing uh, because it's going from me to, to free to Z and then free to Z to Vito and then he pipes that in through the virtual camera. This leaves the streaming option open on, on Open Broadcaster on OBS so you can still stream to YouTube, which is how I'm doing that there. I'm really interested in these restreaming options like Joel was talking about. Um, the one I'd heard of is Restream.io which is a, a web solution, a server solution. I haven't used it too much, but I have heard some people using it that like it. And you can stream to Twitter, you can stream to Twitch and all of these simultaneously as they're elevated. Yeah, pitch. I used Restream for a few years. Um, it's at just some point, um, there was a couple of little errors with it, but mostly it worked pretty well. I was using the free version because that's just what I do. And unfortunately, most of the things I wanted to, to stream to weren't really supported. And in the end, I just decided to, rather than stream into Restream and then stream into Odyssey, I just went straight to YouTube instead. It just made it a lot easier to manage, especially scheduled live streams where mm -hmm. you just get a, you know, it, it and um, OBS does kind of hook up. You can like sign in with your YouTube channel or whatever with OBS. And so then it, you can just stream to like, pick the event you're streaming to. And that, that does help because a lot of times, so I do a weekly crypto news show and a lot of, um, once a month or twice a month, I should say, I have a, a podcast right after that. One of those is the Z Zcash podcast. It's like immediately after. And so sometimes I'm like, stop this show, start this one. It kind of helps to, to ha kind of have that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I like that list. I like that integration. I have, um, for most of my early live streaming, I used, a uh, a little box that's a hardware video encoder and live streamer called a Teradec. Uh, a Teradec is the brand that makes it. The product is video. And with that, you can switch between the events in YouTube very quickly with a little joystick in between. So I live stream conferences as individual talks instead of one big, like, one big live stream each day. Um, we did ZCon 3 with one big live stream per uh, I guess it was before lunch and after lunch for each day because vMix, the software we were using, only shows the most recent like 10 videos, the live stream videos you created in YouTube in order to, to pick one to live stream to. Since I made them in the order that they were going to be in, the ones at the very beginning of the conference weren't even showing in this limited list. vMix is very expensive software. And uh, I wouldn't, for anyone in the Zcash community, I, I wouldn't really recommend doing going that route just because I, I don't think that the cost is necessary for what OBS offers for free. And um, the same with video editing software. We could probably have a whole two-hour discussion about video editing software. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to keep it as open source as possible, focusing on that. Um, the battles between Adobe and Apple, is, that's a long conversation on its own. So uh, this was this was really cool. I like this a lot and we should do it again, this this multi uh, multilingual format. I really am digging it. I hope we can make it super useful. The first steps are never are never uh, really clear. Yeah, baby steps. Easy. Man. Yeah. Baby steps. Babies stumble and fall down all the time. So <laughs> we can do that too. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, this this Marta Belcher uh, testimony that's happening john where can we get that where can we watch this you that it's on it will be streamed on youtube 
let me uh, get that link. I'll post it into the global Discord real quick, Perfect. and then I can post it here. Just give me one sec. Yeah. So I think that we should all, anyone who has time now, uh, it would be cool to jump over to Zcash Global, check out this, uh, this link that John's about to send us with Mata Belcher's testimony. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Mata is on the Zcash Foundation Board of Directors. We just did a, uh, a live stream community call with her a couple of weeks ago and J.W. Verrett. So we can uh, jump over there and watch this testimony, and we can uh, also watch in the Playground Labs channel on the ZFAV Discord. John will be running this translation process there. So if you want to watch um, and vote for what language you want John to translate into, we can do that <laughs> <laughs> and start a fight. OK, uh, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for joining us. That was really awesome and all productive. Right. And I look uh, forward to all of the work we're going to be doing together in the future. Bye. Yes. Thank you, guys. That was great. All right. Goodbye, guys.